even if you say something that gets you canceled, like you probably will, we'll be able to edit it out. So you're good. Uh, <laughs> good to shut my mouth. <laughs> we just learned that the hard day when I was young. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I'm just going to jump straight into it because when you fought for us back at BitB9, when you fought Damone Hawkins, we didn't really know what we were getting into with Tom <laughs> Kaiser. We knew we knew your record. We knew your accolades. We knew a little bit about you. But since then, since I've followed you on Instagram, I've come to learn that you are an absolute master meme artist. This mm-hmm. is, listen, he's undefeated inside the cage. He's 6-0. and He's our welterweight, amateur welterweight champ. We get that. All that's awesome. But his meme game might be better than his fighting game. Like, where does that come from? Uh, that comes from all of my friends, I think. Um, just in, in the right circles. Um, and I don't put them out that you know that much. But I did send you a selection of some of the good ones today. Um, we probably can't share any of those. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're not we're we're family friendly at two four seven. You know, we definitely invite kids, families to come out to our shows. The podcast, you know, you get fighters. There is some cursing and whatnot, but we will probably spare the good people at home some of these memes. And in particular, the one if I had to share just one, it would be that Leo. The Leo Titanic, the Leo. Oh my God! Yeah, I one of the it. best. I cracked up. I lost myself. <laughs> it's funny. Like I just, I went to your Instagram because I can like share my screen here or whatever. But they're always in your story. Like you always save the good memes for the story, and then they're gone. It's like they never existed. Yeah. Well, you know, some people might get sensitive. <laughs> That's smart. But. It's it's a real concern these days. I never thought that would be a problem that I had to look out for. Um, but here we are. Memes. Yeah, ima- imagine you lose it all because of memes. Like, you're just stripped of every title. They take your, your license. They would never take your license, but this is MMA. You're good. But <laughs> Yeah, they leave there. I think they let us have a little bit of leeway, you know, more probably than, than some <laughs> folks in that area. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, man. So, like, like we said, Tom Kaiser, for people just joining the podcast, just listening in, he is the 247 FC amateur welterweight champion. He took that title. It was a vacant title. He won the title against Damone Hawkins at Brawl in the Berg 9 back on October 23rd with a super dominant performance, man. I mean, Damone is super tough. I don't know how much you knew about him going in, but I was actually at his fight right before that on October 9th at the Rivers Casino. It was like a 25-second fight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He, pa- somebody. he pasted that dude rather quickly. So right then I was like, all right, Damone is for real. I looked at his background and his training camp, really good camp, really good background. He, he was, I knew, going to be a tough test, but, man, you kind of imposed your will, which is just what you do to everybody <laughs> so far. What was it about that matchup that was exciting to you, and, and what did you feel from Damone inside the cage? Um, well, you know, anytime you get to fight for a bigger show and have title on the, on the line, it's always exciting. Um, this was my first MMA title, right? Um, and, and you guys have a nice fancy belt, too. We always. do. <laughs> um, we do. <laughs> So just, I mean, just being able to kind of get out there and get a little bit of exposure in somewhere a little bit bigger um, is always a good thing. And you know, winning a title in a pretty dominant fashion and getting the finish out of it is even better. Um, I don't think that, that one was was a super impressive fight. You know, I, I talked on a uh, another podcast about where uh, you know the first two rounds weren't. For whatever reason, they, they just weren't super comfortable. But when I came out in the third round, and I still did well in those rounds. Um, you know, I was able to control those rounds. But for for some reason, kind of out in the uh, out in the open in the space a little bit, I don't know. I, I felt a little bit off. But in the third round, Damone came out, um, and I wanted to stand with him, um, and felt very you know very good while I was. I mean, I stood up a little bit longer out in the open, you know, not up against the cage with him. Um, than than I did in either of the other rounds, and it felt good. But then he you know, he charged in, and the, the takedown was just there. And you know, I there's no sense in being prideful right now and in, in, in standing up and, and trying to bang with people when when there's just such a big opening. Um, 
So took him down and got the finish off of that takedown as well. So you know, it was obviously beneficial. Yeah, that it's it's really interesting to hear you say that because amateurs a lot of times, as I'm sure you know, as some of your opponents have probably done, have a tendency to rush things and, and try to force the fight places where it shouldn't go, and that's when they get in trouble 100% of the time. So the fact that you recognize that is definitely a testament to your experience, your training, your background. And I did I wanted to ask about Team Outlaw because that was a – Jim, for sure, that kind of flew under our radar, I would say. You know, we don't have a ton of guys from Team Outlaw fight for us. Obviously, you're a pretty small, pretty small operation there. What is it about the preparation there that's just such a good fit for you? Well, so Outlaw was back in the day. Uh, by back in the day, I mean probably like 2000, early, early 2000s, right into maybe 2010 was when Outlaw was, was kind of functioning before, and they had a lot of guys in there. Um, it's famously a southpaw gym, and I'm a southpaw there too. We still have a lot of southpaws. Um, there was a one. There was a one time I think there were like seven southpaws and one guy that fought orthodox in the entire gym. Kind wow! Of right. Um, but they shut down for for a while and weren't really doing a whole lot. Um, and they have all sorts of guys. Um, you know, boxers, kickboxers, MMA guys. Um, but we hadn't had much. Of anything in a while and I got in I kind of got my feet back into combat sports um, you know I wrestled in in college not super successfully but I'll tell you what I'm a much better wrestler now than I ever was while I was in college um, and and took some time off and and but then got back into uh, got back into combat sports for a tough man and started training down there and they kind of reopened back up the gym you know we had we had just two or three guys working on it for a little while. Um, and it just kind of built from there. We kept at it after tough man and just said, you know, we don't want to stop. This is great. We love what we're doing. Um, I, you know, I've always had kind of dreams of, of MMA. I'm so glad that I'm, I'm taking that future into, into my hands. Finally, um, a little bit late, better late than never. And obviously I'm doing great. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly working out for you. And I think it's interesting you say a little later than you wanted. And that was one thing that definitely stood out about your career was that it was kind of stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. Do you feel that you're finally in that groove right now where you're just going to be rattling off fights and really making a move? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, So stop and go, it was, I guess, I guess was stop and go for COVID. Man, that whole thing is still just a missing year, even in my mind. Crazy. Um, well, yeah, so it was stop and go, stop and go, wasn't it? There was really one big stop and go in the beginning. My very first fight was 2012. Um, I was still in college, and it just came up out of nowhere. Somebody that I knew was running a show and needed to fill in for a fight. Um, and, and I did it and just mashed some guy. Um, thought he was going to out-wrestle me. And that's you know, all I had going for me at the time. <laughs> I done any striking or anything. It was like, ah, you just go out there and take him down and beat him up. It'll be easy. Uh, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just beat him up. Just go beat him up. Yeah, it was just, I mean, it was just wrestling. And, and I've always had, you know, a very solid wrestling background um, that I'm sure shows. Um, mm-hmm. And when I can get my paws on you, it's it's my world. Yeah. Most, um, which it, no. it's, it's a great thing to have for MMA. If you can have just one thing out of the kind of triangle, then... Uh, I think I'm going to take wrestling every time. Yeah. One thing I think is really interesting about your wrestling in particular, though, is that it's it's the the label of kind of the boring lay and pray wrestler is still prevalent in MMA, I think. People think you're a D1 wrestler or you come from a strong wrestling background. Like, oh, that's cool. You're going to be able to control the fight, but it's not going to be exciting in the process. Yours isn't like that. You know, you're searching for the finish 100% of the time. You finished five out of six of your fights. It's not like you're just taking dudes down to lay on them. You're a, you're very aggressive from the top. It's kind of like, you know, UFC fans, if, if you're not super tuned into the local MMA, you can think of a guy like Khabib, the way he's just constantly pressuring and attacking. And it's not lay and pray by any means um, versus somebody like, you know, a GSP who did have that rep- reputation for a long time, who was just looking to take you down and control and win the fight on point. So Tom is super aggressive once it hits the ground. And I think you know, that's something that is going to make you a lot of fans as you continue your career, man. What, where does that come from? Where, how did you transition from, you know, this traditional wrestling background into an aggressive submission grappler? 
Um, every, you know, everywhere I've gone as a, as a wrestler, a lot of gyms have, have said that. They're like, oh, dude, all you need to do is take them down. Um, and you don't even need to beat them up. You just, just take them down and keep them there. Um, and and I've, ne- you know, I've never been about that. I've never, when I wrestled, the point was never just to, just to hang on. You know, it's you're always searching for a pin. You want, I mean, I don't care if I get it in in the last second of the match. Like I still stuck you, buddy. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, I'm taking that one. Um, and in addition, in wrestling, that's a that's double the team points, right? Uh, wrestling, you have not only your points to win the match, but however you finish, you get just a regular decision. You get three points. If you get a major decision, you know, eight or you beat him by eight or more, you get 14 points. Uh, if you pin him, you get six. Um, so that's kind of just the, the ultimate thing because you do the best that you can for yourself and, and you know, all your boys, um, all the team. And as far as, you know, with the MMA, there is that stigma, and I'm, I'm well aware of that. Um, you know, Ben Askren was a hell of a wrestler, but in – and he knows that he was he was a boring uh, a boring fighter, um, but he could do it. You know, he could still you know cling to you like a wet rag, and you just couldn't get him off. Um, but but that's no fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nobody likes that. <laughs> I'm sure that there will come a time where I have a, a little bit of a slower fight because there's somebody that that I might have to fall my wrestling on, or like that's what I have to to use on him, and I can't physically move forward. You know, they're that good. Um, which would be awesome. I, you know, I love that. But, but the real game is in the transitions, right? That's where you catch people. Um, it's while we're going from our feet to the ground is where I, I could maybe land in a really, really good position, or maybe I could sneak a shot in where it comes in, you know, with the impact of the takedown um, and do some real damage. Or, or when somebody stands up, a lot of times they'll be out of position, standing up off the ground, and it's a great time to attack. So if I'm in control of where those transitions are and my opponent is the one that has to move through them blindly, just hoping that they're going to land somewhere okay, um, then, I mean, I'm stacking that deck in my favor real hard. Yeah. And, and I mean, this is all definitely showing in your fights, man. And I think the Damone Hawkins fight, once again, is kind of a perfect example of that because advanced amateur PA rules, you've got three three-minute rounds for the title. You could have coasted. You submitted Damone in round three with like a minute to go. You absolutely could have taken him down and coasted. But I got a video for anybody who hasn't seen it. We're going to roll this footage, and then then we'll talk about. Hawkins got sick. Devontae Smith could just step in, and nobody would know the difference. <laughs> I well, fully agree. The whole time I'm sitting here looking at him, all I see is Devontae Smith. I'm yeah. telling I'm te- right, right, It's unbelievable. This is that side triangle choke setup. He doesn't quite have it. but uh, Yeah, and he needs to get his head to the mat. And then at what time do you flip your legs over to apply that pressure? Can Once you... you get it secured, you yeah. got to really make sure. That's and it. That's it. it. He's got it. That's wow, it. look at that side triangle choke we gotta from finish. the half guard. Yeah, I mean, as the commentator said, it was not a traditional finish to that either. It was just the combination, I think, of your intense pressure throughout the entire fight definitely wore him down to that point and allowed you to kind of finish it there. but. Like we said, that was the perfect opportunity for you to just take it down right out that last minute, win a decision. There was no doubt you were winning that fight up to that point. What well, what made you, you know, go su- submission hunting instead? Well, again, the the game never stops, right? It's a uh, if if you're not doing if I'm not doing something if I'm not setting somebody up for something, then if they're any good, they should be setting me up for something. Right there, there shouldn't in in a fight unless you know it's been a five round war. Um, we're both dog tired. We should never both just be standing there, um, you know. And if if I see somebody just standing there, then that's when I'm going to attack. Right, is because they're they're off guard. They're not doing something. I can catch them. Um, you know, with that, that was really more of a von flu choke, I guess, with because I had my head so far up under his arm, um, riding across his body like that. Um, and I didn't think that I had it finished either. I was getting ready to to switch my legs over and go for the the arm triangle, um, but he tapped, so I didn't even need to. Good enough. You got to take them however you can get them, right? Yeah, you know whatever works. And that you know I fell right into that position, and that's what I was thinking because I fell there the uh, the takedown in the second round. I think just about in the same kind of position 
you know, he almost tried to guillotine choke me, but but missed it, and, uh, and I had my head stuck up under there in the right spot, um, but ended up, I think, popping out and, uh, and pummeling a little bit. That's awesome, man. I think, you know, I haven't seen every fight of yours to this point, but there is a fight early in, in your career that I see on Tapology. I wanted to ask you about against Brian Wiseman. Looks like a first round knockout. Um, like we said, you know, mostly known for your ground and pound or your submissions. I want to know what the knockout was all about. How'd you get that one done? Oh, uh, that was a ground and pound knockout. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that was, you know, that was a, a real small show. Um, and we're all warming up in the back, and you, you, know, you can't help but, but see each other. Um, and, and going out, my coach says, look, I'm pretty sure that he's just going to go for a really big right hand, and, and all I want you to do is duck under, take him down, secure position, climb on top, and then pound him. Like, that was, that was the entire game plan. That was it. A couple of sentences. And, uh, and sure enough, that's what we did. The, uh, oh, that that fight irks me because that kid tried to hit me off the glove tap. You know? mm. so, nice. Shoot one in. Um, and I'm not about that. Uh, you know, I don't think just about anybody is. And I dodged it, and sure enough, he loaded up for a big right hand. I went straight under and picked him way up, slammed him, and and uh, mount got mount and, and started pummeling him. Um, but I remember, I remember that. I had a couple of of real like real solid hits. I'll send you the video sometime. But I mean, I had to have had seven or eight solid, like pretty solid hits on him. I remember every time I'd hit him because he he had his head up off the mat, right? And if if you have your head on the mat, then it won't do anything. But if your head's up a little bit, it might rebound up, mm -hmm. do twice the damage from the hit, um, and knock you into the next one, right? And he he kept on pulling his head up, so I just kept on knocking it back into the canvas. And uh, and he kept on. He'd look back at me every single time. Like I, I'd hit him and he'd look back. I'd hit him, and look back. And then one time I hit him, and he didn't look back. And that's when I was like, "All right, this is this has been enough." Wow! Uh, right when the ref, you know, saw the same thing, I was like, "All right, this is this is done." Sure. And, and that's an interesting distinction, too, because obviously if you were fighting in Pennsylvania that early in your career, you can't ground and pound to the head in novice amateur. So it's kind of, right. yeah. Pennsylvania until I have three fights. That was very smart. Very smart of you to wait until you could actually use that ground and pound. It's an interesting rule set, and I think it's uh, interesting for amateur fighters in general to have to know different rules depending on where you are like that seems very annoying to me is that for you as a fighter is that like annoying to keep track of the different rules um at first yeah that's that's definitely what i thought i mean it's i, I had absolutely zero intention of taking a fight where i had I, I wouldn't be able to ground pound you know because i had a wrestling background and i didn't have any experience i didn't know how i was going to do on feet right but i knew i'd always be able to probably Resort, uh, resort to some wrestling and get a takedown and pump them. Um, but if I can't pump on the ground, then what am I going to do? You know, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have a good measure of where my jujitsu was either at that point, you know, very early in my career. Um, but you know, since I obviously know that it's, it's pretty good, um, and it's just getting better all the time, which is great. But, uh, but I was like I said, I was never going going to take that fight, like a fight in Pennsylvania. Um, so that closed a big door of competition for me, right? I had I could take fights in West Virginia and Ohio and Virginia, which has full pro rules for amateurs. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done, but would like to, because the way that I look at it now is, you know, if you have a good solid amateur career, um, it's it's like specializing in a sport too too young, right? I don't want to just get used to doing things just one way all the time. It'll, it'll kill your creativity. You know, it, it's a challenge to overcome at this point. You know, now if I go to uh, uh, my next fight is is in Ohio, so I can't do head kicks, right, or knees to the head. Um, and I could in my last fight, and they were extremely effective too. They're a great tool for me. So now. I have to. Uh, I just have a little extra challenge. I just have a little side side quest, I guess. Where yeah. with this, one, it's okay. You gotta do this one, but you can't can't keep him in the head. So I gotta find a way around that and still beat him. 
That's fun. I mean, I like the way you describe it as kind of a side quest or, you know, just this kind of side challenge for you to keep in mind. It's like achievement unlocked whenever you, yeah. whenever you win. Yeah. Right. It's interesting, man. I think your last fight, like you were just talking about a little bit is against Nick Wells at premier MMA championship 17 premier is a great, uh, promotion as well out of Kentucky. I like a lot of what they do. They seem to do things the right way there too. So you took home, took what's that? The great guys and a well-run show. Nice. That's good to know. Second to us, I'm sure in your career, but at least, (laughs) no, (laughs) but, uh, you did, man, you look phenomenal in that fight too, to anybody who saw it. I mean, it was pretty much pure domination from the, from the onset, as you've come to expect, took home a little gold in that one too. Um, one thing that I want to point out, though, man, is that your opponent had a way better mullet than you, and that's disappointing to me personally. Ooh. Look, I, we've been over this. Um, and <laughs> since I don't know, I can't pull up pictures on this phone. Um, I can. I got you. I come prepared. All right. Well, look here, buddy. And, and this was years ago, okay? I don't have a mullet right now because I couldn't grow one for, for work for quite a while. I can have hair, but and this one is still just a baby, right? This one was bleached blonde with the Hogan stash. Um, Look at that out on my face. Um, I looked like one of the meanest, angriest people running around. Oh, it's so beautiful. I, like I had lost my biker gang and was going to kill somebody to find out where they were. Um, oh, one hundred percent. I mean, dude, if you told me like there's this former college wrestler in MMA from West Virginia. What's he look like? I, I'd like sketch this guy. Like this would be my police sketch of a guess of what he would look like. <laughs> when I, uh, I fought tough man the first year in West Virginia, which is just a local boxing competition. Um, and I had the same thing. I had a, a even meaner mullet than that. And the, the Hogan stash. Is, um, it, is it ever going to come back? I mean, that's really the question here. Oh my God. You know, I've been thinking about it ever since, uh, you know, mullets are popular right now, but they are there guys. Sorry. Um, we'll see. man. It's, it's a pain. It's a pain in the ass to grow out. All right. You know, I don't envy girls having to deal with their hair. All right. I can wash mine with a bar. So most nights. Yeah. Okay. Like guys, the, the, the bottle of, uh, of cleaner for guys that says, you know, face hair chest body and balls on it is it's true okay guys can it's one thing does the job for everything it's Uh, true it's easy right and the amount that the amount that i had to spend on freaking shampoo when my mullet was at its longest down to my shoulders was ridiculous to keep that thing clean because i mean and then good lord i had to learn about dry shampoo (laughs) but people i had I had girls I knew that were telling me, you know, this is the way to go. This will save you some money and keep your hair clean. I was like, ah, that doesn't really feel clean. That just feels like it probably smells better. Like, yep. Yep. See, my wife uses dry shampoo and that's still something that I've never, I never dove into that world yet. I mean, I got some locks myself, but I keep it traditional. I still use like the three in one, you know, shampoo, conditioner, body wash. I don't care. Like it's not that big of a deal. The hair still looks okay. But I, I I definitely agree. Like when I had short hair, just being able to get in a shower and just you know quick scrub, that's nice. There, it's nice. Quick, I have you know, and I have a lot on my plate these days, right? A lot of times I can't I can't dry you know drying the hair, right? Do you do you ever use a blow dryer? I, I really don't. You know, I'm just that guy that looks at air dry, but I get it. Yeah. You know, there were times there were times where uh, where I had to, or I'd look like a sloppy mess. I mean, every once in a while, I do need to look professional. <laughs> yeah i hate I I if, if it's a professional fighter then the mullet flies okay we can do it right, right? as soon as as soon as we move to the pro ranks which i'm sure you're wondering about and i'll, I'll answer now which that's going to be this year right? nice We're, nice grow this year um you know we, we've we've already got six and oh um i'm i'm 30 it's there's been about enough time to kind of dig around down here yeah, um, things feel good, and I've got another one lined up for March fifth, and then you guys have an April show where I might have another opportunity to defend nice. um, my title, or that could be the pro debut. Um, could be. 
on how things go. Yeah. You know, it's just a little bit up in the air. Um, but but we'll see, you know, after this fight because this March 5th one, I can't, can't really say anything about now. The contracts aren't out yet and everything. Yeah, but, understood. But yeah. it's going to be a bigger, a bigger event. Um, and, you know, I'm going in to, to kill to that one too. And that should be, you know, great exposure and seeing kind of what happens right in the aftermath of that is going to kind of decide where we're going to go. Yeah, that's great to hear, man. And you definitely did get ahead of something that I was clearly going to ask you at some point. But uh, I, w- I wanted to like draw attention to the little caption on the screen because when I was researching you a little more, you know, I didn't know all the stats and figures about you, but this one definitely stood out. The number nine ranked amateur welterweight in all of the U.S. Southeast, which on topology that included 627 fighters. So number nine out of 627, it's kind of what you were just saying, man. You're running out of who else are you possibly going to fight at this point as an as an amateur? So it's definitely that time. So it's it's cool to hear that you're on that level, man. Well, I've looked at that list as well. Um, I had no idea about you know even the top about topology rankings until somebody else was upset at me for being ranked um, at middleweight when I never fought middleweight. Um, huh. <laughs> anyways, but but I looked at the list of people that are ahead of me, and really I think that I would be probably like or three even um the the top guy on that list is a 155 guy he shouldn't who ashton kirby yeah yeah well, I mean, he is a I like fight at welterweight like one or two and a whole bunch of 155 <laughs> that's crazy that that's impressive it says he's only only 21 years old and he's 11 and one yeah that dude is active that's crazy that's good that's what you want especially in the in an amateur career Right, because this is where the experience is, you know. Especially if if you're just fighting, um, I, you know. I had I had a great college experience. You know, I didn't didn't get the chance to really compete for WVU. I was rele- relegated kind of to a training partner, but I still got to be around and a part of you know just about world class wrestling um, for a long time. And and outside of of college, I had a lot of opportunities as well um so and you know i've competed on big stages in front of people and, and with crowds and you know a bunch of times in a weekend uh, you know I've, I've done that but other people that don't have that experience you know it, it takes it takes a good couple of fights to get really comfortable in there yeah. um it takes, it takes a lot of getting beat up to to feel comfortable doing just doing the job um so the more amateur fights, really, the better. If I, you know, if I started off sooner, then you know my plan would have been to have a, a ton of amateur fights. I'd have been right. all, you know, snatching up belts. I mean, it's not a bad, and you're kind of doing that right now. So it's not a not a bad plan for you, man. I think it's really interesting. You know, you mentioned WVU's wrestling team kind of in passing, and I think anybody who knows collegiate athletics understands that to even make a team like WVU's wrestling team, you know, you're pretty elite wrestling at that point um was greg jones your coach when you were there yeah and he's down nice. at oh bless it what is the name of the place sanford mma sanford, right yeah. um and really i think that's what he's meant to be doing he looks like he is doing great and just thriving down there um you know he's he's not too hollywood to answer a text if i send it to him but we don't we don't talk a whole lot um but i'll tell you what is that is one place I would absolutely look at to join for a pro team. Um, and I mean, I might, might have to give Greg a call sometime soon about coming down and, and just seeing it. Um, I have family that lives in Fort Florida. It wouldn't be a very difficult transition for me. Um, and, and getting to hook back up with old coaches, uh, everything would, I think, would also be fantastic. And they had a great team. They looked like they were doing good things down there. Oh man, they truly are. I think Greg, you know, he's one of the best guys. I've I've known Greg for a while now. I, I love everything he does. Like you said, he's truly found his element down there and is doing sensational work with all those guys. But we had two local fighters, Steve Mallory and Don Mazzotta, were both down there training. Steve, tall Steve, is still down there right now training with them. He's made that, you know, home and forged a really good undefeated Bellator career right now under them so he's doing great things and he was on the podcast too actually so sweet what's up steve (laughs) but uh he he, they all you know they have nothing but good things to say about how greg 
operates down there. So I think that could be a natural fit for you for sure. And and like I said, there's already guys from this region and that have fought for 247 and been around 247 a lot that have, have gone down there. So you would be another one in line, man. It does make sense. Yeah, I mean, it'd be a good place to go. Um, and, man, I really couldn't pass up being somewhere warm all the time. Jeez. I, I mean. Finally getting winter now um, after – after however long it's, it's finally come and uh and man i hope it's it's not just a bitch <laughs> i don't like the cold okay I'll, I'll admit that. i'm right with you so there you go there's for all your future opponents you just got to like sneak a bag of ice into the cage and you'll you'll be <laughs> calm you'll take that o right away <laughs> it freeze me out <laughs> it's funny man yeah I mean, Fairmont, West Virginia, definitely not known for its, you know, heat and nice summers. And Flor- Florida's a little different than Fairmont, I would say. <laughs> you know, I'm not looking forward to that, but I like the mountains. And mountains are beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you live around, around Pittsburgh. You know exactly how it is, buddy. Oh, yeah. And I grew up actually in South Central PA, uh, kind of on the Maryland border-ish. Near Breezewood on the Turnpike, if you've ever traveled to PA Turnpike near Breezewood. But then I went to, I went to college at WV, WVU. I don't know if I even told you that, but I graduated. Oh. Yeah, I graduated in, in 2013, so we were there at the same time for sure. Yeah. yeah. Together, huh? Crazy. Crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, Morgantown's built on a freaking hill, so you want to talk about mountains. It's like that whole campus is an adventure if you're walking to class. Like, depending on where you got to go, that can get brutal fast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's legendary stairs at this university. <laughs> and the, the and rest of sets behind the stadium, right, uh, by Law School Hill. Yes. Um, you know, and that was a, a tradition, was running Law School Hill, you know, as a team in the morning. And then they went and built a bunch of duplexes or townhouses or something on, uh, on that hill. And so just future generations can't share in that suffering. Um, a little bit steamed about. I had to do a lot of those hills. A lot of good sweat and tears went into that just for them to to make money off of it. Dang it! Yeah. Well, it's like it's like building on top of an Indian burial ground. It Truly. Truly, man. I mean, I haven't been back to Morgantown in years, but I've heard from everybody that I would not recognize it if I went back. Oh, very different. You know, the blue parrot burned down. <laughs> yeah, I heard. It had a good run. It had a good run. <laughs> it had a great run for what it was. <laughs> for what it was. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's getting better, though. You know, it's it's becoming less burning couches, wasteland, and, and more of, of a real town and, and a respectable school, and I'm sure that they're very happy about that. Yeah, I mean, they, they've done great stuff. You know, it's obviously a very notable school, huge. They got great funding. They're doing good things. At the at the highest level there, you know, they do awesome. I mean, Ruby Memorial's right there. They do awesome research and everything there. So it's a great place. Um, I love WVU still, which was funny because before this job, I was covering the Steelers, the Pirates, and uh, Pitt basketball. And when I was covering Pitt, everybody assumed I was a Pitt fan. Like, I was rooting for Pitt. I was like, oh, man, if you guys only actually knew where I went to college. <laughs> Double agent, huh? Yep, exactly, exactly. But, yeah, I, I miss the backyard brawl for sure, man. Those are good times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a fun place. It's a fun place, but that's it's also a reason that I've got to get out of here. Um you know, I I worked at the bars for for a while um, after college, or while I was in college, and a little bit after college, um, and so still in, am am very friendly with them, with all of them. Speaking of which, I actually just picked up one of them that I worked at. Uh, Joe Mamas is now sponsoring me. Um, oh, that's and, beautiful. Nice. Yeah. So shout out to Joe Mamas. Uh, great place to get a drink and see a band play. Um, I'd say they have one of the best stages you know in town. You're not anywhere. Yeah. Um, but a fun place. That that might have been the Lazy Lizard still while you were here. I think it was. Yep. yep. Definitely the Lazy Lizard. Yep. It yeah. may, maybe when I was a senior at Transition, like maybe, because I do okay. feel like I've been to Joe Mama's. Probably. But I don't know. I don't know. It could have been when I came back because I had a couple younger friends too, and I did still like come visit them after I graduated the first couple years. But I haven't been back since probably 2016, I would say. 
Ooh, well, hey man, after this uh, after this March March fight, then come on down. I'll treat you to a good time. Hey, there we go. Take me to Joe Mama's. Go <laughs> all around. No, that's awesome, dude. But uh, man, I'm not gonna take up too much more of your time, dude. I definitely appreciate you coming on and, and kind of low key breaking a little news for your next fight, March 5th. We're we're excited for you. Excited to see what's gonna come of that. And then, like you said. If you get out of that un- unscathed, man, April 16th, we we do have that card at the Monroeville Convention Center where you already fought. So you know what that's all about. You know what that venue's all about. I love it there. I think it's a great crowd, great atmosphere. Production's awesome there every time. So if we could, we could get a title defense or, like you said, a pro debut, you know, we, we'll gladly have a pro fight too. There's, I, It's funny because I was just thinking about it. Bit B9, the card you fought on was all amateur, and that's very strange for us that, you know, usually yeah. doesn't happen, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, so now uh, for the next one, you know, we'll get you a pro fight. We do pro fights too. I think we do them pretty well. So <laughs> we'll slide you in. All right. I'm sure that you guys can find everything, you know, in addition to Premier being a well run show, you guys surprised me with how well run y'all's show was too. Um, I mean, you guys are fantastic. I love being up there. You know, there's no reason I wouldn't come back. Nice. That means a lot, man. We, we really do try to do things the right way. So it's cool to hear, you know, an out of town fighter who's never had no experiences with us be be impressed with it so there you go for any future awesome. fighters take tom's word. <laughs> they were great nice well i hope to to work with you again in the future man because like i said i i love your career arc right now obviously i like just talking to you you know fully i'm not allowed to be biased or anything but but you're a great dude i love chopping it up with you and we just love to be in touch professionally either way either way you know we'll, we'll be following your career and, and cheering along with you man Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, local boys, I guess, right? You can't. These West Virginia boys. I'm actually, like I said, I'm not a West Virginia boy, really, but I do know. I well, I, re- I relate to them. <laughs> for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Full, full bread one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I spent a whole lot of money that says that I uh, do have some West Virginia knowledge in me. That, that degree was not cheap. Documentation. Exactly. It's a, they actually spelled my middle name wrong on it, too. <laughs> Fun fact. And I went, uh, it's a journalism degree. So from the journalism school has a typo on my phone. <laughs> it's like, you can't, you can't write this stuff. It's great. Yeah. Oh. All right, man. Have you back anytime, right? You guys want to talk about something? Let me know. We're going to do it, man. I appreciate it. In the meantime, you guys need to follow Tom Kaiser. He is at Kaiser Moss, M-A-S on instagram just follow him on instagram i'm telling you go to the stories enjoy the memes he's he's an elite meme artist and an elite fighter so he, he's a great follow there i appreciate it man thanks again